Hey, hey you, yes you, see all these wonderful people right here? They are my Patreons. With the support I get from them, I can afford to do my passion as a career and bring you guys weekly videos. Want to join them? For just $1 a month, you can get videos 24 hours before anyone else. And for even higher tiers, you can get Polaroids, letters, and mystery boxes from me to you. And even fursuit parts, not to mention my eternal thanks. So what are you waiting for? Become a Patreon today via the link in the description. Thanks again, enjoy the video. Hey everyone, and welcome to my Sergal fursuit tutorial series. In this series, I'll be covering Sergal heads, tails, hands, and feet. The techniques you will learn can be applied to almost any species with unique muzzle shapes, so let's get on into it. This head tutorial will cover how I go about shaping the base. To see how I fur my fursuit heads, refer to my original fursuit head tutorial and I'll pop it up in the little eye with this timestamp for that. I'm starting with a pre-made bucket head base. Keep an eye out for next week's tutorial to see how I made this one and to get your hands on a pattern for it but any bucket head you've made should work fine. I've already drawn a side on view of what I want my muzzle and bottom jaw to look like. All the patterns I use for this tutorial will be up on my Patreon for $10 plus tiers. However, you can just as easily make your own with a pen and paper. You'll notice the bottom jaw has a bit more of a pointy chin to it and that's because Sergal seemed to have a weirdly shaped chin and I wanted to replicate that with my carb. I'm going to start by cutting out three of my muzzle pieces out of two inch upholstery foam and two of my bottom jaw pieces. This is so I can start with the approximate final thickness of each and your bottom jaw is obviously going to be thinner than your top. I then glue these together in a big stack making sure they line up. Now begins the big carve. I find what always takes me the longest with thick muzzled characters like circles or duchies is carving down the muzzle. You want to leave the nose bridge on the piece and carve spaces for where the eyes will sit. Hopefully you'll be able to gauge what I mean from the video. I also work on shaping the circle into the famous cheese wedge shape, which proves easier said than done as I mess around with it for several hours. You'll see me browse my phone every now and again, and I'm actually looking up reference images. There are so few Toonie Sergals out there that it's very hard to find a good example that isn't realistic. So I use references of other Toonie Sergal fursuits as well as art to inspire my shaping. I use a mix of scissors and my bread cutter to help get the shape I want. You can of course just use scissors if you don't have a knife. Next, I mark out where the inner upper jaw will start. For circles, this starts relatively far back with about a quarter length of muzzle point on the tip of the muzzle. I mark out a curve where it ends and run all the way down to the base of the piece and then use my knife to carve it out. I also carve out the flat edge to accommodate a nose more comfortably. Don't forget to do this or else you're gonna have a very squished nose. Next, I start shaping the bottom jaw by drawing out the curve of the piece and cutting it out from the two stacked pieces and testing the fit on the head. I decide to knock this piece back about half an inch so the bottom jaw is just past the place where the inner jaw starts. I also begin carving the piece smooth and rounded, taking special care with the pointy cheese chin to make sure that part still has definition and shape. I also carve a small curve into the base so that it can sit against the bucket head base a bit nicer. By the way, I'm not drinking a two litre bottle of Sprite. We had Sprite with our pizza. We filled the bottle with water because hydration is important, kids. You'll notice I constantly go back and forth adjusting the length of the bottom jaw. I find it to be pretty essential to get this right, to get the right look on the suit. I decide it's time to glue, so I apply a layer of high temp hot glue to each and allow it to sit for a couple seconds to go a bit tacky, and then hold each piece in place on the bucket head in my lap until completely dry. I spend a bit more time cleaning up the muzzle shape and then start drafting a rough eye shape using the customer's reference and other circle suits as reference. I trace that onto the head where the eyes will go and swiftly move on to our cheek pieces. I draft the pattern piece using the eyes and jaw lines as a guide and cut one each out of two inch foam.
I then begin another big carve. Along where the bottom jaw meets the cheek, I cut out a large portion of the cheek to help exaggerate the smile of the character. I also add a small strip of one inch thick foam to each side of the bottom jaw to assist in the smooth transition from the jaw to the cheek. I also curve the edges to begin that shaping too. Now I make a key mistake here, can you guess what it is? I carved the wrong side of the opposite cheek. You want to make sure that each piece has the opposite side carved. Oh well, cut it out again. Now time to glue it onto the head using a generous amount of hot glue left to go tacky for a couple seconds. Glue each cheek to the side of your head, lining up your two pieces with your eyes and jaw. Wait to dry completely, applying pressure the entire time to each. It's important that you let it dry completely or else you will have the pieces peeling off your base. Now I add a small amount of one centimeter thick foam to assist in smoothing out the transition between the upper jaw and the cheek. Usually I wouldn't worry about this, however, since circles have such a flat sides to their faces, we wanna make this as flat from cheek to nose tip as we can. I draft up a small piece by eye to sit on top of the cheeks. I cut one out of two inch foam and then split down the middle to form two one inch thick pieces. You want this shape to sit on top of the cheek and slightly into the cheekbones. Now I begin the third big carve, starting to smooth out all the pieces we have just glued down onto the desired shape. I stand up a lot during this process as I need to look down on top of the head to ensure a straight line on each side of the face. I now draft two eyebrow pieces and cut them out of two inch foam, split down the middle and glue onto the head. I then decide that this doesn't look how I want and rip it off and start the patterning again. This time going for a single piece that spans the curve of the entire eyebrow area. Kind of like a curvy T with the base torn off a bit. This is then cut out of 2 inch foam and split down the middle to form a 1 inch piece. This is then glued in place and carved flush with the other pieces. I then use a leftover one inch tea piece to carve some eyebrows, which are kind of shaped like long jelly beans. My customer requested more muzzle points, so I carve off a bit from each side and then smooth my eyebrows down. I then spend a bit of time filling in any gaps with scrap foam and doing a general cleanup. I also remove the foam around the eyes so you can see out of them and begin drafting the ears. Cut the shape out of EVA foam and mess around with the overall look, each time sending an image to the customer for feedback. I also carve out the inside of the nostrils with some scissors to create a pickable nose. Customer requested shorter ears, so I begin to adjust the shape to better suit. Then carve out another of the ear shape from 2 inch foam and split it down the middle so I have two 1 inch thick ear pieces. 
as well as a thinner piece to go on the outside of the ears to give it shape. These are all glued onto the ear and carved to be homogenous. Glue these onto the base, carving the backs at an angle if needed to achieve the desired effect. Then I cut a strip of fleece about two inches thick and glue around the base of your ears for durability. Now I'm starting to work on the eyes. I use eye mesh from Curlworks over on Etsy and I've spray painted the front of it white to better help the paint pens show up. This circle will have yellow eyes with black slit pupils, so I'm going to first lay down a layer of yellow paint pen and let it dry completely before moving on to the iris. I also use a white paint pen to add sparkle to the eye. I also work on a black outline for around the eye once the eyes are installed and furred. Once that's done, I take my eyes, taking care to make sure that they're angled correctly so that when I glue them into the head, the pupils will both be vertical. I place them in the head and begin using scrap foam to smooth out the transition between the side of the eyes and the head. I'm not gluing these in yet as that will be done after I custom tailor a lining for this head. And there you have it, one toony cheese boy. He do be looking kind of swanky though. Hope you all enjoyed this tutorial. Tune in next time to see how I made the bucket head base for the tutorial and find out how you can get your hands on the pattern. Leave any questions you have down below and I'll see you in the next video.